But again, they get it wrong, God rescues them, and by now we know how the story goes. Verse 32, they angered the Lord at the waters of Meribah, and they even made Moses angry and cross, and he spoke rash words, which was the worst for him. And then when they came into the land, verse 34 and following, they didn't get rid of the local inhabitants as they'd been told, that's a whole other story, but the key thing is they learned to worship the local idols, which was the very specific thing that they shouldn't have done. And particularly, this led them to sacrifice their sons and their daughters to demons. And this human sacrifice is kind of the nadir. This is as low as you can sink for the people of God, who are the people of the creator God, who loves life and gives people families and so on. So they became unclean by their acts, verse 39, and prostituted themselves in their doings. And the result was, verse 40 and following, that the Lord was angry with his people, gave them into the hand of the nations, those who hated them ruled over them. Many times he delivered them. The psalmist is summing up the whole history of Israel. But they went on being rebellious. And nevertheless, he regarded their distress when he heard their cry. And the psalm actually, like Psalm 105, is ultimately not just about the people's failure, but about the utter faithfulness of God. Verse 45, he remembered their covenant and showed compassion according to the abundance, here it is again, of his chesed, his steadfast love. So you've got these two stories. He caused them to be pitied by all who held them captive. That's towards the end of the exile, the Babylonians taking pity on them. And then you get the prayer, verse 47. Wherever we are, we've told this great story. We're not proud of it. In fact, we're deeply ashamed of it. But save us, O Lord God. Gather us from among the nations so that we may give thanks to your holy name and glory in your praise. And then verse 48 sums up perhaps the whole of the previous section of the Psalter. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel forever and ever. And let all the people say amen and praise the Lord. Because we've told the story truly. We've told it truly from God's point of view. He did what he intended. It was a wonderful story and it worked. And then we've told it from our point of view. We kept on messing up and astonishingly, God kept on forgiving us, restoring us, sending us people to intercede and so on and so on. All because of his compassion and faithfulness and steadfast love. We, the people of God in Christ, need to learn to tell the true story of the church, the story from the very early days of Jesus and the apostles through to our own day. It's a story of God doing wonderful things, amazing things, half of which most Christian people have never even heard of. It's also a story of terrible disasters and would-be Christian people doing crazy things and starting wars and witch hunts and goodness knows what, inquisitions. We know all that stuff, but we have to remember ultimately the story is not about us. We are not the heroes and heroines of the story. The story is about the faithful God. God is faithful and God goes on being faithful, showing compassion according to the abundance of his steadfast love. So as I've said a few times in this course, there are different strands in the Old Testament which all meet and merge in Jesus and particularly in his death. So there are these strands of telling the story of the people of God, which come together both in Jesus and in church history and in our own lives. And we have to learn to be honest, to tell those stories before God, not simply to say, oh dear, how, how on earth did we get it so wrong? but to say, thank you, Lord. You are the God of compassion and mercy, and we will trust you and entrust ourselves to you and praise your name as long as we live.